Well, we've got some pretty cool stuff happening in the AI space. Microsoft Research just dropped a kind of AI games creator, kinda. There's a lot to unpack in there. We're gonna take a dive into it, but the cool part is they released the code. Kind of out of nowhere, we've got a new AI video model coming out and it's open source. Plus, we're gonna take a look at ByteDance's Phantom, kind of the latest in the one-shot image reference to video thing. All right, grab your controller, Ready Player One. I know it's a PlayStation controller. I don't actually have an Xbox. Kicking off, I have been following the growing intersection between AI and video games for a while now. We've seen some pretty interesting technology coming out of it. Notably, there was the AI Doom game that was showcased a while back, and more recently, Google's DeepMind unveiled Genie 2. Now, to note, both of these projects, I really wouldn't necessarily classify them as games. They were more like AI video models that would respond to keyboard inputs for generation. So this is Muse. It is a generative AI model that is being controlled by a player. While this is somewhat similar to what we saw with Genie 2, there are some key differences here, namely in that Microsoft, well, leveled up. So of course, I probably should point out that, yes, the example footage does look a little bit rough. Uh, I believe this is coming in at a raster size of around 300 by 180 and running at about 10 frames a second. So yet yeah, not something that you will necessarily wanna play on your expensive gaming monitor or on your like 65 inch TV. But again, this is a research project and as we'll discuss in a little bit, not really meant to do the whole like prompt to game thing. So the underlying tech behind Muse is called WAM or World and Human Action Model. Uh, do you think they come up with the acronym before the name? I'm really starting to suspect they do. So WAM was then taken over to the Xbox game studio Ninja Theory to train up their game uh, Bleeding Edge. From there, a lot of footage was then captured of a, an actual human playing the game. That's actually what we're looking at here. Uh, this is apparently kind of one of the, like a four by four arena battle type game. Uh, I've never played it before. It does look fun. They then took all of that data, crunched it down via a GPU cluster, and then took that output and then ran that through a number of NVIDIA H100s. I do want to point out that the NVIDIA H100, which I, I believe is the Grace Hopper model, um, yeah, that, that, that was like $30,000. And they did say plural. All of that led to 1 million training updates. Like any good training montage in an 80s action movie, uh, all of that did lead to them overcoming a lot of the issues that both the Doom model had and Genie 2 as well. Uh, notably, you know, recognizable characters throughout, basic movements and geometry, and no degradation over time. Persistence or persistency, which I know is a real word, it just sounds like something that Ron Burgundy would say, uh, that refers to introducing new elements into the model's generation and having it act accordingly. In this first example, we can see an added character put in and then, you know, it, it begins to fight the dude as, as that character should. So all of this is really cool, but I mean, obviously that is not something that you're gonna necessarily want to play. So, you know, what's the point of this? Well, according to Microsoft, this is a tool that lets game developers edit a game level using existing game concepts and, you know, test things out. So uh, basically place elements in and, you know, see if a character can make a jump or something along those lines. Yeah, so as a developer sketchpad, I mean, yeah, that does make sense. Although, I mean, is it currently practical given, you know, multiple H100s needed in order to capture footage and, you know, be able to generate a simulation? Probably not. But that is at current scale. And as we all know, technology just gets faster and cheaper. So where does the future of Muse lie? Well, Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer mused, yeah, you caught that, that it could be used for gaming preservation. Spencer said, you can imagine a world where from gameplay data and video that a model could learn old games and really make them portable to any platform. Furthering these models could learn completely how a game plays without the necessity of the original engine running on original hardware and that he thinks it opens up a ton of opportunity. So while we are a long way off from that, I think the important thing to take away from all of this is that, you know, Bethesda will be able to re-release Skyrim when we all have iPhone 32s. Breaking, just as I'm recording this, uh, Alibaba have announced a new video model that they are releasing, uh, and apparently it's going to be open source. Yeah, apparently this is WANX 2.1 or WANX. I I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to go ahead and presume that it's WANX. 
We really only have uh, some demo footage that they released to go off of right now. This uh, sequence showing complex motion. Um, yeah, some pretty solid outputs in here. Uh, definitely, definitely looked at some Olympic footage. They then showcase some physics stuff. Um, yeah, did, all of this looks really great. Definitely uh, at least in line with Google's VO2, which at least currently right now, in my opinion, has the best physics of any AI video generator. They then go on to showcase some cinematic styles. Um, they definitely, it's interesting, they definitely lean much more into kind of animated styles through these examples. Uh, so I'm curious what that might mean. And then move on to showcase the fact that the model can handle text generation uh, and what they're calling VFX. To me, um, I think that this might've been the stuff that showcases more the cinematic style. So again, just announced, I'm sure we're gonna be hearing more about this in the upcoming days, uh, particularly since it's open source. So while we're waiting on WANX or, or WANX, I can't say that was a straight face, uh, let's go check in on something that we can play with, namely Kyber. But first, well, 2025 is in full swing, and no matter how you're using AI, having a smart marketing playbook is the key to leveling up your business. And luckily for us, our friends at HubSpot have a free AI marketing toolkit available for you to download in the description. In the marketing toolkit, you'll get access to an ebook with a step-by-step -step framework on how to actually use AI. If you're a seasoned marketing pro or just getting started with your small business, the knowledge here really will set you apart from the pack. This document takes you through everything from defining your marketing objectives, building your AI marketing strategy, performance tracking for optimization, and so much more. And it even includes an additional stack of AI tools that you'll wanna check out to go even further with AI. You even get a thousand plus pre-made AI prompts so you, know, you don't have to start using AI from scratch. This is filled with highly crafted prompts covering everything from copywriting to pricing to distribution and a lot more. But my favorite thing in here is the section on how to create your marketing strategy in 12 steps. This lays out exactly when you should be defining your target audience and when you should be developing your unique brand proposition. As the old saying goes, you won't be replaced by AI, but you will be replaced by someone using AI. So make sure to get ahead of the wave and download the free resources below. My thanks to HubSpot for sponsoring today's video. So if you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I, I've been a pretty big fan of Kyber. Now they did take a pretty big swing recently, essentially overhauling the entire platform into Super Studio. Now, if you happen to have missed that, I did do a whole video on Kyber's Super Studio. It is linked down below. Uh, also, I know that not all of you are a huge fan of like the AI murder board. But for me, I've always loved that, you know, Kyber keeps it weird. And I, I mean, I got to respect the fact that they swung for the fences on this. Now, admittedly at launch, it really wasn't that spaghetti noodly. In fact, if anything, it was kind of just more like a collection bin, but they have sussed that out now and they've added in a ton of features. For one, you can train Laura's here uh, now. Uh, you can generate images in Recraft. I did a whole video on Recraft a while back. I really like Recraft a lot. Uh, if you haven't tried them, you should definitely check them out. We have our standard video generators of Kling, Minimax, Runway, and Luma, but also a lot of other interesting stuff like a Topaz image upscaler. Uh, we do have video upscaling happening here now. Um, their Video Restyle 2.0 is here and the ability to split stems from audio. So kicking off with something you know more on the weird and artistic side before we move into more practical uses, uh, here is, this was actually one of my favorites. This was some video that I shot of me playing guitar one night uh, and then ran through Kyber's old video to video model. <laughs> So giving that a video restyle with the new model and using this as an image reference, uh, we end up with this as an output, which look for sure is still weird, but I mean, it's also kind of cool. Uh, there's definitely some like morphing going on here, but I think that actually has more to do with the source video uh, than anything. I don't know, I kind of like it. Quick tour of some audio stuff. Uh, this is a Udio generation uh, that I did a while back. Let's take a quick listen. And from here, you can separate out any of the various instruments. Uh, let's try guitar. And 
And now taking a quick look at the add audio to video feature. This was an output that I generated in Sky Reels. What was I like two days ago? Man, this week. Um, and then just gave it the prompt, man starts laughing. Let's take a look at what it, we got. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty solid. Uh, not necessarily something that I might use for the final track, but I mean, the fact that it gets the timing of the laugh right, I mean, that's remarkable. So moving into a more practical workflow, uh, if this looks confusing to you, I, I promise it is, it is really not. Um, I'll take you through the whole thing here. So kicking off, I just brought in a model maker or Laura essentially, um, and then tied that to a whole collection of mid journey images that uh, I was using mid journeys C ref here to try to nail the character. Uh, anybody that's used C ref knows that, you know, there's like, you know, mild inconsistencies across, but um, I figured, you know, through this, there was, there was enough that was close enough. Generating her up will automatically create a flux collection. From here, I took it over to image lab and obviously all you have to do is just connect them here. Um, they did do a really smart thing by color coding everything now. So uh, connections to and fro uh, actually make sense. So one superpower that's in Image Lab is actually the stencil feature. Uh, this was our uh, bootleg Laura Croft uh, generation that uh, we put together in the look at Kriya's uh, like 2D to 3D thing uh, kind of recently. So uh, just nabbing her and then again, our trained Laura character. And depending on prompt and stylization, we ended up with outputs like this. Now, I will say in terms of consistency, it's pretty close, but definitely takes influence from, you know, our Laura Croft side of things. So if you're really aiming for consistency, um, you almost kind of have to reverse engineer from your stencil refs. I did like this output, so I just created a Minimax flow here, uh, connected them together and gave it the prompt. Girl turns to the camera as the camera orbits and use the Minimax 01 live model. I ended up running it three times before landing on this one. I um, was pretty happy there. Now, something kind of interesting happens here because I then create another node into uh, the video restylized 2.0. Surprisingly, we did end up getting our camera rotation in. You can, of course, take that output and start to get weird with it. I, I have no problems with that. Uh, in fact, I love this stuff. From there, we just took everything over to a video upscale uh, that ends up in another bin as well, clicking that and then doing an uh, add audio to video. <laughs> So zooming out now, it probably looks like it makes a lot more sense. Um, the plus side with like all of this is the fact that like this workflow just exists. So you can now change out your, uh, you know, stencil image still with the same character and continue to iterate, experiment, et cetera, et cetera. What I really like about this is that this is just one example. I mean, there's a ton of tools in here. Um, you can and probably should develop your own unique workflows. Now I do know that Kyber is still cooking, uh, going back to video games at the very beginning of this, this is not even my final form. I mean, that's not a spoiler or anything. I mean, anybody that's in the AI space is in the kitchen right now, uh, but I will be keeping an eye on Kyber and I will definitely let you know when the next big update drops. Rounding out, ByteDance have showcased Phantom, uh, subject consistent video generation via cross model alignment. That doesn't spell Phantom at all. Now I'll say that, you know, when you initially look at this, it looks like the very typical, like one shot photo to video generator that uh, we've definitely seen a lot of. But when you dig in a little bit, I think that that's where you start to see what ByteDance, who remember does own TikTok, is really up to. As on the page, there are episodes created from phantom generated videos. Uh, let's take a look at well, Phantom of the Opera. So while I'm not necessarily blown away by the, you know, outputs here, I do find the idea of, you know, three to four uh, references within a scene uh, that is generated. That's, that's pretty interesting. There's another one where they kind of do a riff on Annabelle in the Creepy Doll movie, which furthers my thesis that no matter what culture you grew up in, creepy dolls are terrifying. And while I can't be certain, uh, I think by watching this, I kind of got where Bite Dance might be going with this, is that you know this is probably going to be meant uh, for TikTok shorts. I don't know why I said TikTok shorts. I mean, are there TikTok longs? Uh, anyhow, the idea of probably being that you could take a photo of yourself, some props and, you know, pictures of your friends uh, and then create a, you know, short TikTok film out of them. I can't say for certain, but you know, given a lot of the stuff that we have seen out of ByteDance recently, I mean, it, it kind of stands to reason that it's going to end up there. 
I'll keep an eye out on this, but you know, I'm not getting my hopes up too high. Again, it's ByteDance, so uh, like 50-50 chance. So that's it for today. I mean, there were like three videos this week, so I'm actually gonna go take a nap. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.